Hey there fellow narrow gaugers. Well, the uh, the new batteries have arrived from Battleborn. The uh, pair of uh, 24 volt 50 amp hour batteries. They're here. The, uh, the new charge controller has arrived to replace the old Midnight Classic which suffered some sort of failure last year. Um, and I'm going to reuse the uh, Magnusine uh, inverter system which is functioning properly. So we're in the cab of the 70 tonner. I installed this uh, galvanized steel box and the batteries will go in here. I'm just going to set them in here and uh, hook them up uh, initially probably sometime during a year. Um, I'll go and insulate that and set it up for some sort of heat so that uh, we can keep the batteries above freezing allowing us to continue to charge these batteries all year long since these lithium-ion batteries do not like um, to charge below freezing. As a matter of fact it destroys them. So, um, so we're going to get started on this. Uh, installing this. I'm going to take uh, this out, put this in its place, uh, hook the batteries up, turn the uh, solar panels back on, and uh, hopefully uh, all of this stuff works. Um, the uh, let's see, the solar panels are up there. I have um, I bought five more uh, used panels off of a, I guess a decommissioned solar farm out in Arizona. I can put three more in to get to the maximum um, capacity of that new charge controller. So we'll have eight panels and I'll have two spares. Um, so uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to get the basic system running. Um, I'll add the three panels later on. Um, and then I'm also thinking of installing a couple more of the Battleborns to increase the capacity of the system. Uh, we're going to be using a little bit more electricity this year, uh, especially since we'll have power back to the caboose and also some power that's going to be needed in the engine house for another project that I will cover in a later video. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get started here and uh, we'll see how this goes. Alright, I uh, pulled the cover off of the midnight and start disconnecting wires and I noticed I noticed this there's a bunch of charring right here and up through here so at some point this either this thing failed or a uh, lightning strike or something but uh, yeah that's that's the problem with this thing it it has some internal issues so uh, yeah no choice but to replace it so what we have here, um, these are, these go to the battery. This is uh, negative and positive, and these go to the um, uh, to the solar array and negative positive. So I'm going to take this unit off. I'm going to put this unit in its place, and um, then I'll connect the connect the batteries. Um, this thing has a uh, has a way that um, that you can go into a phone app to uh, to set the uh, parameters on this or all you have to do is move this uh, selector switch to number seven and that's for the, uh, the lithium-ion batteries um, and then it automatically fig you know, figures what the voltage you're at and does a lot of its own stuff on its own um, so I got the first battery in the box like I said earlier, I'm just going to set this up to prove that it's going to work. Um, just make all the connections temporarily, make sure everything works in the system, and then I'll go back in and drill a hole through the box and run the wires through, probably put a piece of plywood underneath the batteries, um, set this up um, so that it, it can be locked. Uh, I've got to put a door lock on the cab of the locomotive too. I want to keep visitors out of here. Um, in 2019, we had some one of the one of the visitors here. I think was a child came in here and, and 
um, threw a couple of breakers on the uh, uh, inverter, turned all the lights off in the building. So uh, since we have the installation in here, we're going to keep the cab locked and uh, so anyone can't get in. So um, for those of you who have not been following along with what we're doing and why we're doing this, uh, the Youngstown Steel Heritage Site does not have a connection to the grid. Uh, we don't have an electric meter, we have no connection to all those wires over there. All the electricity we use comes from the solar panels or from that generator. And I would like to not have to use that generator anymore. So the revamping of the solar installation is hopefully going to provide us enough storage capacity that even if we don't have any sunlight for a couple of days in a row, that uh, we still have enough electricity to run the basic lighting and all that around the site. Um, it's a huge cost savings for us. Um, I figured out that over the life of this, as long as our electric bill, well, as uh, if our electric bill was any more than like $40 a month, then this, uh, this system would make economic sense to put in. And absolutely the electric bill here would be over $40 a month. So therefore, instead of that monthly $50, $60 electric bill that goes out for the site, we put in a few thousand dollars at one time and we just run the solar installation. So we don't have that reoccurring, you know, paras parasitic expense. And I hate those parasitic expenses, those monthly bills that have to go out because that also means you need a monthly income. Well, we don't always have a monthly income. <laughs> we'll have some income during the summer, but in the winter, get things get pretty uh, pretty slim around here. So, and, and also, I mean, you know, this entire place is about tinkering with stuff. And doing the solar is just another way of tinkering with, with engineering and physics. Um, and... Uh, you know, doing things that require a little bit of intelligence, a little bit of thought, and it's just interesting. I'm just fascinated by by solar and, and how this stuff works and making power this way. I mean, I just love doing this sort of thing. So, you know, I'd, I'd much rather tinker around with this than pay an electric bill. <laughs> so, so at any rate, uh, I'm going to get back to work here. All right, so uh, got everything hooked up. Uh, got the batteries hooked up in parallel and just temporarily, uh, since it's not doesn't go through a hole in the bulkhead, but just lines are going over for now into the uh, invert or the uh, yeah the inverter uh, set up here, and the charger wires are going up into the charge controller. And uh, these two going to the uh, solar array, these two come back down into here. And as you can see, we're now inverting with uh, 27.6 volts and 6 amps of load, um, which means 6 amps of load to the uh, green engine house. I have the power to the main building shut off. Um, this uh, uh, this Victron charge controller has an internal Wi-Fi connection, so I can I can go on the phone and uh, turn it on and control all the parameters of the charge controller. I could look in real time how many watts of power is coming in, what the voltage from the uh, panel uh, um, solar panels it is, what the amperage is, what the voltage going to the batteries are and the amperage going to the batteries um so all that i can i can control off the phone app now and i don't have to do it off of the display that was on the um midnight controller so i like that um i think that that's that's a lot more functionality than i had before um what I can do now is that there's enough room in here. I can add another battery, give me 150 amp hours at uh, 24 volts. And that's something that we're probably going to do here before too long. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is um, 
well, I've got to take off in a little bit. I'm just going to leave the system on and uh, let those batteries charge up. And uh, we're just going to keep this on and, and keep using the power like we were before. I mean, this is, this is great. Uh, this is working out all right. And I think this is going to help us immensely. Oh, one thing I had to do on the solar panels um, is uh, disconnect the fifth one on the right. Since the um, these panels put out like 37 volts open circuit voltage, and if you add all that voltage together, you get more than 150 volts, which is the maximum voltage that the charge controller can handle. So um, what we're going to do is um, leave that last one disconnected and then when I add those additional panels uh, oh as a matter of fact I think I can put four in so that means I'll only have one spare and I'll have eight panels total which will get me um, you know, well, the four here will be in series the next four will be in series and then those two will be connected in parallel which will uh, maintain the uh, voltage of under 150, I think it's around 130 or so, uh, total voltage, and the amperage will be below the 35 amp limit. So we'll be getting the maximum amount of power that we can get out of the eight solar panels coming into the charge controller, going to the batteries. With that large amount of power going to the batteries, those uh, lithium ions can charge very fast, so that means very short recharge times. Um, and uh, then when adding additional batteries means that we have longer that we can go with no sun running power. Um, and then I think we can, you know, if we wanted to add additional batteries to get to the point where, um, you know, it would just run everything here for a day or two straight. Um, that's, and that's what I'd like to get to because, you, you know, we have some of these weeks where you have three or four days in a row where it's just no sun or very minimal sun so having the large amount of pa panels means that if the sun peeks through the clouds you know for even for a short period of time it may be able to charge everything back up and if not we'll have the batteries to carry us through so um, that's just a basic overview of what we got going on here I hope that this is going to be a very uh, maintenance free uh, power installation and uh, we'll see, uh, see how this works out. Well, at any rate, um, that's all I've got for today.